Hey, Busy Bees. Today, we are back with another book. And the title of our book is The Sneetches and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. So this book is very unique in a way that it has multiple stories. So each day on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are going to read one story out of this book until we are finished. Okay. So let's pop open the book and fly through this adventure together. The Sneetches and Other Stories by Dr. Seuss. Written and illustrated. Now, the star belly Sneetches had bellies with stars. The plain belly Sneetches had none upon stars. Those stars weren't so big. They were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they had stars, all the star belly sneetches would brag. We're the best kind of sneetch on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd saunter straight past them without even talking. When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your bellies had stars, and the plain belly children had none upon stars. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roast, or picnics or parties or marshmallow toast, they never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near. And that's how they treated them year after year. Oh no, my goodness, they're so divided. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches, just sitting there wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBean, and I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy, but I can fix that. I'm the fix it up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need, and my prices are low, and I work at great speed, and my work is 100% guaranteed. Then, quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for $3 each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clampered inside. Then the big machine roared and it clunked and it bonked and it jerked and it burped and it bopped them about. But the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon stars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all just the same. Now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief, groaned the ones who had stars at first. We're still the best sneeches and they are the worst. But now, how in the world would we know? They all frowned. If which kind is what or the other way round. So now they're confused. Then up came McBeam with a very sly wink. And he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So you don't know who's who. That is perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you, again, the best sneeches on beaches. And all it will cost you is $10 each. Oh, my goodness. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like sneeches who have them on thars. And that handy machine 
working very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. My goodness, do you think he's there just to earn money so he's switching everybody around? Hmm. Then, with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their, their beaks, and they let out a shout. We know who is who. Now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. Then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star up machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. And he is just earning all the money. All the rest of that day, on those wild screaming beaches, the fix-it-up chappy kept fixing up sneeches, off again, on again, in again, out again, through the machines they raced round and about again. Changing their stars every minute or two, they kept paying money, they kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew whether this one was that one or that one was this one or which one was what one or what one was who. Maybe there was a plan. Then when every last cent of their money was spent, the fix-it-up chappy packed up and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn. No, you can't teach a sneech. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the Sneetches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that Sneetches are Sneetches and no kind of Sneetch is the best on the beaches. That day, all the Sneetches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon stars. And that is the end of our book. And this will be our second book coming on Wednesday. But I am so glad now I'm kind of thankful for McBean because he got them so confused that they didn't know who had a star and who didn't. And so it could be that the ones that started with stars were the ones that ended without stars. We'll never know. But in the end, that didn't even matter. They're just sneeches and they should be okay on the beaches. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you like... uh. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you'd like to follow along for more adventures, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you on the next one.